Hello, everyone in YouTube land. It's your Common Sense Editorial Team, Common Sense Education Editorial Team. I'm Tanner. That's Chrissy. Every week on sometime on Tuesday, we drop a video on our channel that features a review from commonsense.org slash education. Chrissy, you've got our review for today. So what are we going to be talking about? We are going to be talking about ear sketch. Yeah, you heard me right. Ear sketch. Sounds like it potentially could be gross. It's not. It's not gross. Also, it's not about drawing your ear. Just to change things up and, and keep you guessing. It's ear sketch, which you can see we gave four stars, seven to 12. And here is what is especially cool top line headline for you. It's a song builder with coding instruction built in. What you say? Yeah, that's right. You are actually building songs, making beats, as the young people say, with code. So here is what I love. I've been looking at a lot of coding platforms lately, and this one is 100% free, first of all. Good to know. Yes. And what's that? That's great. This I was not expecting that. I, yeah, I, yeah, it's free. Yeah, it is free. And um, it comes at coding in a completely unique way that I haven't seen. Um, so you can see here, are you a teacher? Get free teaching materials. That's right. You can use your own sounds uh, or mm. the ones that are already embedded. And it has two coding languages, Python and JavaScript, hmm. uh, which also, you know, there are a handful of coding platforms that um, have more than one coding language and are free. Um, so that is also a big bonus. So once you, you sign up and you get in here, um, you can see that you can filter by audience and curriculum length, which I think when it comes to coding is really key because not every teacher, of course, subject areas especially, um, have a lot of time in your schedule for teaching coding. But if you are looking for a cool hour of code activity that you can build in and it offers creativity in a way that um, students might not expect, this might be a, a really great option. But you can see that there are other um, options here as well. And um, the culturally authentic practice to advance computational thinking in youth, um, the goal is to be really inclusive when it comes to programming, coding, um, and to, to get you know all kinds of kids to be interested and see it as relevant. Um, which I think is amazing and really important. So I, I was yes. sitting there trying to unpack what the acronym was because I knew it had to be an acronym. And then I realized the acronyms at the very start of that sentence, it's capacity. I was like, capacity. K-PAC. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you idiot. It says capacity right there. <laughs> Listen. We need one of those Sesame Street sound out, put the word together. That's what I need all the time. Uh, let's say you want to jump into Hour of Code. You can choose here Python or JavaScript as discussed. And then once you actually get into the interface, you also have some options once you get in. So again, you can choose program language, but it's also multilingual. So you can jump in there as well. Um, and then you can see the you know embedded the code editor. You have embedded sounds. Um, here's a tour that walks kids through. Um, and so you know you can see off right from the jump. Even though there's a tour, this starts you at a particular level. So this isn't for necessarily for little kids who have never um, done any programming or coding before, nor is it necessarily for kids who, um, you know, you might have to set the stage a little bit for kids to jump in here and start using. That said, the tour is pretty thorough. Um, and because it's hour of code, 
they're trying to set kids up for success in the short term. So it won't, um, you know, take you forever to get kids up to speed in order to use this. Um, and then you might be planning yes, to cover this, but the blocks mode, did you notice that? It looks like there's a toggle there. Yeah. You see that? It's it's in the code editor oh, right, over here, on the right, right here. next to run. <laughs> hey, yes. Um, so it's still text based blocks like Scratch, where you can um, modify different elements within the drag and drop blocks. Yes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's kind of neat that, that it supports both versions. Yes. And you can toggle between. Um, and then over here, you can see, I don't think uh, you'll be able to hear it, but you can check out all the different sounds. You can see Alicia Keys is, is one of the feature artists, Khalid. So there are a lot of things that kids are going to be excited about um, and that it actually feels like something they can relate to um, and not just, you know, this abstract idea of programming, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's relatable. Yeah. In it, their everyday it, lives. And it creative. looks, it looks like what they've done is taken a digital audio workstation like Ableton and almost peeled back the GUI, like the graphical interface that sits over it and kind of exposed the, the code running within a program like that and allowing you to dig in at that layer rather than abstracting it with, you know, little buttons and dials you tweak. Instead, you're actually tweaking the lines of code that in an Ableton, the dial would be tweaking, which is, it, I could see this being an interesting. Like one-to-one? Uh, -one. Yeah, like let, you know, you're, you because maybe a lot of students might already be using those kinds of beats makers at home. And then you can say, like, here's the here's what's running underneath that. Kind of yeah, that's experience. a cool idea. Yeah. So that was Ear Sketch. Um, that's available as a review over on commonsense.org slash education. So make sure to check that out. And of course, return here every Tuesday for more videos like this. So please like this video, subscribe, comment below if you've got a question. Thank you.